Hi. One four three. I love you. I love you. Did you know that that one four three was I love you? Do you know what he what doesn't do you know, know about? That because oh. he doesn't know about pager code. Oh my god! Let's talk about it after. But let's first introduce Shiri Appleby, who is here with us today. She knows about pager codes. She knows about pager codes. Another LA born and raised local. Yeah. And Her husband is John of John and Vinny's. Rob is super excited because it's the best food. And you know from Roswell, Unreal, I mean so many things. Um, but she joins us today, so let's invite Shiri. <laughs> Hi. Um, hi, guys. <laughs> hi. Hi. We're so happy you're here. Thanks for having me. I'm Thanks really excited to be here. for coming. Um, we've been in the same orbit, I feel like, forever. But you oh, guys right. actually know each other. Yeah, we share a mutual bestie. We do. We were in her wedding. That's right. We were right. in the same wedding. That's right. We had so much fun. Yeah. We have a mutual bestie, Wells Butler, who's just the greatest. I know Isn't Wells, she too. she's the greatest? Yeah, the she's- best. I the laughed sweetest. so much with her. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Such a Me nice too. friendship. That was when her wedding was a long time ago. Dude. A long that time was ago. that was a messy wedding for me. What do you mean? Oh, you were still yeah. drinking? Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. I, had, I think like me and Veronique got in a fight that night. <laughs> nice. it, was like a, it was like a thing. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, it was fun. I don't remember that never came, it never filtered its way all the way to me. I didn't experience that. <laughs> no, no, no. I hope it, I hope Wells didn't either. I think we go back even further because oh. I feel like you went to school with my first boyfriend. Who's that? Ollie Goldstein. Sure, Ollie Goldstein. Yeah. <laughs> we went to middle school and high school together. Yeah. It's so funny. Somebody mentioned him the other day and I like tried to look him up on Instagram. And He's I there. Oh, is he? Yeah. That's so funny. Oh yeah, my God. Ollie Goldstein. Yeah. Later tell me what's going on with him. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We'll Ollie to, Goldstein, if you're out there, we, we, want, to know, uh, we want to know. We want to know how you're yeah, doing. Yeah, we went to Calabasas yeah. High School together. Yeah. yeah. I you're, remember. You're also a local like us, like yeah. grew up here. I grew up in LA, the best. Were you born such, and raised here? Yep. I yep. grew up in the Valley. Same. Yep. I yep. loved the Valley. I mm-hmm. loved living in LA. I still really much, very much love living in LA. Yeah. yeah. Which you don't, I feel like you don't hear often. People loving living in L.A. or people yeah. being from L.A.? Well, both. Uh, well, both. I think being, I could never, I always think about the people that came to move here. Right. That I can't really wrap my head around. Like, that seems like such a big, like, leap. Yeah. Even people that left where their hometown is, because I've never left, that seems, like, radical to me. Right. Um, and I like going to the beach. Yeah. So I, LA has a beach. And so <laughs> I like that and I like having a city lifestyle. So yeah. it kind of is checking a lot of boxes. Do you actually go to the beach though? We go to the beach like every weekend. You do? Yeah. Oh my God. My husband would be so yeah. happy if I just he had was you. like, I, no, my husband was like very like digging his heels into the ground. And I was just like, this has been my lifelong dream. And like yeah. I'm in the midst of my life. My life is not going to slow down. So we're just doing it and we you just, just do it. We just do you it. We pack up the car. We pack up the car. We go. My son's learned to surf. No way. My, they they have like friends that they have out at the beach oh, on wow. the weekends and you're like just in nature Amazing. so that when you come back to the city on Monday, you're like, let's go to baseball. Let's go to karate. Let's like right. do all of our activities because on the weekend, we're just going to slow down. So at the, I, I need to know how this goes because literally that's my husband's dream. It's, he, every weekend, he's like, can we go to the beach? I'm like, it's every day. Freezing. Every day. <laughs> but it's not really. <laughs> Really that cold once so you get out there and there's like pretty hikes and there's like yeah. not like amazing restaurants but not terrible restaurants yeah. but right. just sitting on the beach and decompressing as a family and like bringing a kite or bringing a football so and nice. like walking it's just it's and like seeing like the kids learning the tides and like what's happening with like nature and where are the males migrating and let's take a yeah. beach walk and collect shells like that's really great time with no screens. And the next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. And the kids have been outside. I'm going to meet you there. I've come. I'm going to meet there you there. There you go. Come. No, but like to actually do it, I'm just really yeah. in awe of it. But yeah. I think I'm the opposite. So like I'm like mountains, right? Sure. So like yesterday we went on a hike and it's a waterfall hike and it's like. Beautiful. Maybe it's even half a mile in. Definitely not more than a mile, but it's easy. Yeah. We do it all the time. And then you're out there and you're like, oh, the kids are in nature. Yeah, like, they love yeah. it. I took, I, we didn't go to the beach last week because my husband's out of town. I took the kids on a walk too, out yeah. and like in the woods. And you're like, I just need to get out of the traffic. And LA has a lot of these hikes. It has yes. a lot of that stuff, but you just have to like 
go to it. Like you have, it takes effort to find it. it. I love I I loved Unreal. Oh, oh my God. Loved Loved. I binged that. That's nice. Oh, me too. I needed time alone. I was like, I want to watch Like I loved it. That was like my airplane download binge show. I was also like, I like watch the Bachelor franchise. Like, oh, you do? For, well, I used to. I, yeah. I, I kind of, I've kind of fallen off. Yeah. Uh, so I was so excited when your show was coming. I was like, yeah. oh my god! And what a fun! It was show. so fun. It was so to good. Me. Oh my god! It looked like it. It was so fun to make. I was like, it envious. could be so creative. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was be a fun. Sh- it was a fun yeah. show to make, and it was fun because like the cameras could see each other, so there was like no rules in terms Ooh, of like right. what you're shooting, and you could have like three steady cams going at the same time, like a steady cams. Like a camera that yeah. guys are wearing, and so like you could shoot everything at one time because all the cameras could see each other, That's and nothing so cool. was off limits. And we were just literally shooting like all night long, every night outside. Oof, the night and it shoots. was just it was cool. the worst. And, but it was just like steamy. And then every year, the great thing, which Rachel you'll know, is like. If you do a lot of seasons of show with the same cast, sometimes it can get kind of stale. But every year it was like all new actors. Right. And like all new relationships and all new dynamics. So it really felt fresh every season. Yeah. And the part was the she was like nuts. And like <laughs> she was so fun to play. So I had really, and that's when they let me start directing. So then there was like even so more cool. to like just take on and get engaged in. Yeah. Was that something you always wanted to do? Yeah, but when I started acting when I was three, I didn't see a woman. <laughs> I know I said that, but it's true. My parents put me in show business when I was three years old. I get it. But I didn't see a woman on set until the very last episode of Roswell. I made 65 episodes of that show. And then on the very last episode, a woman walked on set. And I was like, what? What's she doing? A woman could do this? Oh, I've wow. I've been working since I was three. I've never seen a woman. A woman director. And I would go to editing during lunch on Roswell just because I was, like, really Into interested it. in the process. Yeah. And it was 10 more years before I saw another woman. 10, Ten years? years between? 10 years. 10 more years. Oh, my God. Were you looking? It, and <laughs> then we were just like, there was only one. Like, w- was that an accident? And she also came on on the very last episode. So even if, you know, the Slow. whole gig on TV directing is, like, you want to get asked back. Mm-hmm. Right. right, but they brought her on for the last one, so there were no more episodes to come back to get asked back to do. Right, so I never saw her again. Wow, and then it was 10 more years, and then I was like, w- and then that woman had to have a man, a male director on set watching her. What did it have sure to be she, a male to make sure she didn't screw up? Wait, how many years ago was this? Uh, this was 14 years ago. And so then I started shadowing like crazy because then I was like, and then everywhere I went to try to go get a job, places that I had worked before, like CW and ABC Family, they were like, sorry, we can't hire you. (gasps) Why? Like, they were like, we won't be able to hire you. The best thing you can do is go get a TV show on the air and make it a hit. And direct it. And then then you can direct So I shadowed like crazy. I shadowed like 10 times and I took it so seriously. I was there every single day of prep, every day of shooting, every day of post, like 10 times. So by the time I did the pilot for Unreal, I was like, I'm literally here for a directing job. Yeah. Yeah. This thing will be a hit. Good for you. And if on the pilot, I was like, I have to get an episode. And so when the second season, the show came out, it was like Peabody winning. Everyone got nominated. I was like, I'm getting an episode. It took Mm -hmm. to the second season though. Well, the first season of the show, I had to make the show a hit. Okay, so your job that was, was just to make job a hit. That was my job was like, get yeah. it a just hit. Get it. I have to make it a hit. And then I was like, I have to have an episode. So then yeah. I got one in the second one. I got one in the third one. And then the second season, they gave me two, including the series finale. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So then I like had four, but it was sort of like having none because it's you're directing on the show that you're starring in. Yeah, so you're so they don't split focus. Promise. So the Hollywood sort of looks at it like yeah. that's nepotism. Oh, They're got just it. making you happy. Got it. Got it. Oh wow, it's fun. It's fun. So it's it was fun. just more like I am going to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am going because like I didn't choose to be an actress. You didn't choose that at three. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if your kids choose any at three. But the only thing my three year olds were choosing was candy, yeah. right? And exactly. TV. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> and. Uh, so, yeah, that was the thing I was choosing. So I was just like, okay, if that's the obstacle, I have to figure out the, how do I, how do I beat this obstacle? 
Which I think is part of life. That's it. You know? You can't get upset like, about it. It is what it is. We all have our obstacles we have to choose into. And like, good for you that it that you made a choice and actually made it happen. Now, which do you prefer? I mean, they're both amazing. Mm-hmm. They're both really amazing. Like directing, especially when you direct certain actors in certain scenes, you're like, oh man, I wish I was doing that. Like, why am I not right? doing that? I should be in that scene. Mm. And sometimes on set, you like hear that they're casting a part. You're like, well, I'm free after this episode. <laughs> if you, guys, you know, but like, I don't like going on the road for four or five months at a time and leaving my family yeah. on a TV show and you have to sign a contract for six years. So that's like just not in the cards for me right now. Yeah. And I like to have a little bit more control. I had a really hard time with people touching me all day. Oh, Like oh. that really became like annoying to me. And like, I want to get my own cup of tea. I don't want you to like just try to keep me in a cage and like bring me things. Like yeah. I want to be my own person sort of floating around. And I've been doing it for so long that I'm like, I know how I want this to look. I know how I want this to feel. Mm -hmm. Like, I know how to create a vibe on set. I know how to make my day. Like, I want to be the person in charge as opposed to being like, man, I can't believe this person's going to keep us here for 15 hours. And what are they shooting? And the tone's off. And like, yeah, I want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I will say like when I have worked with actor directors, right? Like, not, I mean, and there's obviously fantastic directors that are just, directors. But like, there's like another understanding, like, you know, the communication and and just being on both sides of the camera, you're just able to kind of. Like we're speaking another language, right? right? You and I are speaking another language. I'm like, hey, can you make it like. Yeah. And like, that makes no sense to any other human, but you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. And you're like, okay, turn the camera on. She got it. And I'm like, Rachel, give me another one. Just pick up the base. And like it's done, and now we're moving on. Right, 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 right. But it's like if you're gonna go over there and start talking about the technical, I need an eight hat on the jib on a thing. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. but just like make it shoulder high and yeah. like make it look good. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like another language. I am loving it though. I am like loving directing. I feel like I've kind of just started my whole life over. Oh wow. And I feel like I haven't even started my career yet. It's oh my so god, good. that's amazing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I feel like I haven't even started. Wow. So that's just your main focus. It's just directing right now. Yeah. It's very hard to be an actress right now. Yeah. <laughs> just want to say. When is it? It's when really is it hard. Not, but, but yeah, my <laughs> whole focus right now is directing. Like, the, my hustle is, like, directing. That's so cool. Yeah, so I got off Unreal, and I was just like, I'm not. I'm kind of, I'm just going to put that to bed. Wow. Put acting to bed in general? Pretty much. Unless somebody asks me to do something, or, like, I like making an audition tape just to still act. Act. Right. Like, and like, if I get the job, great. But I'm not like, I'm not like calling my agent about that every day. I'm calling my agent every day about like, what's going on? Did you submit me? You know, all yeah. that other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My hustle's directing. What about it is love that. Right yeah. Now. What is, oh, to be an actress? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know because I'm not really fully in the hustle of it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as Rachel just said, like, it's never that easy. And they're very small boxes you're trying to put yourself in. And, like, if there's not that many boxes casting that fit you, like, there's just not that much opportunity. Right. And, like, I want to go to work every single day. I want to work Monday through Friday. I want to wrap a show on Friday. I want to start a new show on Monday. Mm -hmm. I want to make one movie a year for the next 20 years. Like, I don't want to stop working. Right. And so if I'm looking for a tiny, tiny window of, like, she needs to be 5'2", brown hair, kind of cute, da-da-da, like, where are those parts? Unless I'm writing them myself. Unless you're writing them. Right. It's very hard. And then, But you also touched on, like, not wanting to, like you said, pick up and go and leave your family and— and it's really, you know. But it, maybe in 10 years when my kids are in college, I will want to right, do that. Right, right. So then how do I keep myself in the game yeah. for the next 10 years right. so that when my kids are gone, I'm like, all right, put me on a show and let's go to Budapest and he's yeah. coming and we're going in six yeah. months and now I've got a statue and like, that's great. <laughs> but I but can't do that. In, yeah. I can't do that right now. No, right. I, know. I know. So which, I'm just curious because I know the feeling of always like, Whenever you see something that you know you know you're capable of doing, right? yeah, and someone else is doing it. So when you're directing, yeah. and you see someone act, and you're yeah. thinking, "Ooh, I wish I was doing that," and then you're acting, and you see someone direct, and yeah. you're like, "Ooh, I wish I was doing that." Yeah, does that ever go away for you? Are you ever in the zone? On one thing. Oh, sure. At a time? Most of the time, when I'm directing, I'm not thinking you're I want to be thinking. in that scene. Yeah. 
I'm not. And the fun part is being like watching the performance and then giving the note and you're like, oh man, they did it so much better than I would have done it. Right. Right. Oh, they're crushing that. That little thing made all the difference. I would say even maybe one job out of 10 jobs, I'm thinking, 10 full jobs, like in a jobs a month, where there's one scene in that whole entire experience that I'm like, I wish I was in that scene. It's like so rare. It's so minuscule compared to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm rarely like, I'm just like walking around. I'm like hustling. I'm moving. I'm I'm never thinking about when I'm acting. I'm like, man, I would really like to be directing this. Mm. You feel that stronger. Yes. But then certain people you watch acting, you're like, man, that shit looks fun. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That happens a lot. And I always am like, oh, directing would be so cool. But then like just like the technicality behind it and like, the, that other, not the creative side, but the other side. I'm always so intimidated by. Sure. I was too. But you hire the right people. No, but you have right? to know. You no, have to no. know. You no. have to know. Because <laughs> you have to know because you also have to know how you're walking on set and what they're looking at you at. Like of course. you were or are an actress that is now walking on set and you better know exactly you what you're doing right. because if not, they will run right over you. Right. Yeah. So that's the shadowing, you, like crazy. Shadowing. What is a shot list? How do I build yeah. a shot list? What do I actually need? How can I give all the departments the exact things that I yeah. want? Day one of prep so they can do their best and I'm not going to change my mind. And if I do change my mind, do I give them enough notice to change my mind? And I'm going to write a shot list before day one so everybody on day one knows exactly what we're shooting. Mm-hmm. And that's the only yeah. way I'm going to finish my day on time and the right. crew is going to trust me. Right. And Are that's you television, you know. Uh, am I type A? Because the mean, shot I list is so. what intimidates me. No, but you could do it. Like, like once you learn it, yeah, you could do it. Somebody gave me great advice when I was pre- when I was shadowing too. Was like watch favorite movies or favorite TV shows. This all comes back to watching TV <laughs> and uh, write down all their shots. Yeah, and then you'll start like counting. Like so now, like when I do watch TV, I'm like wide shot, wide shot. They had two yeah. singles yeah. from here, from right. this, the this. Oh, look at that. They didn't cover it all. Oh, look at Oppenheimer. I was watching it last night. I'm like, lots of close-ups. <laughs> Living in lots of close-ups. Int- yeah. I mean, I didn't watch the whole movie, so like, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so then once you start to put it all together, then you're like writing it down yourself. You're like, oh, wait, now I'm looking at a scene. I could start to break this down. Yeah. That two, that joke, ah, that joke needs a two shot, two shot. Right. Well, yeah. So then you have you your shot list. So then you just like, list. that's yeah. it. You think in shot list. And it's like, just like writing a recipe. Our friend, we share a mutual friend in Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman told me once that, uh, that making something is a lot like cooking. Mm. <laughs> so that writing the script is, is writing the recipe. Going to set is like going to the grocery store and getting all of your ingredients. And then when you go to editing, it's like you're cooking and actually putting the meal together. That's exactly and right. And he's also a really yeah. good cook. And he's a very good cook. Yeah, he's a really good oh. cook too. Oh yeah, he baked like the best pie ever. What kind of pie? Well, we picked berries, and it was like a fresh like anyway. <laughs> Berry Speaking pie. Of cooking, mm-hmm. What is oh. it like living with your husband it's and the eating? It's and amazing. Yeah, it is. Because yeah, I don't cook. Oh, you, so don't. you don't. Okay, no, tell us I about that. So, for everyone listening, obviously John and Vinny's very uh, like well known LA chefs. Incredible. I mean, yeah. just. Everything about the two of them, but your husband, John. And yeah. anyway, just to like the best food ever. Yeah. And they're really nice guys and they're really, really hardworking and they're, you know, they really just sort of give it their all. But he, yeah, he, so like two years ago, we have kids. We have an 11 year old daughter and an eight year old son. And like two years ago, they like sat us down before school last year and they were like, I was making the lunches and they were just like, this has to stop. (laughs) This is a meal. My son starts crying. He's like six. He starts like, he goes, I'm hungry during the day. I need like a proper meal. Okay. Like it cannot be like a bag of chips and a sandwich every day. Dad needs to be in charge. Oh, okay. And And did he take over? He took over lunches. And what are they, I need to know what the lunches are. Yeah, so lunches. So I'm just saying like, that's why certain things are amazing. And also like, I can make like pancakes. Like I can kind of make a few things for every meal, like for like breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But like I can- You'd keep them alive. I'd keep them alive, but my husband's out of town now. My kids are like, mom, just so you're going (laughs) to take us out every night, right? And I'm like, I'm not even going to attempt this. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. 
And yeah. also at the end of the night, you're like tired and then like to make a meal. It's just not, yeah. but for my husband, it like brings him joy. It's easy, 30 minutes. Lunch is sometimes it's, sometimes it is sandwiches. Yeah. But if it's like for her, it's like turkey, avocado. Yeah. A like little like a cheese, meal. Yeah. like a sandwich. My husband, my son's more like salami or something like that. Leftover dumplings is really big. I go to the supermarket once a week and I get them like supermarket sushi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're right? Fresh veggies, yeah. fruit. I have like given in. I'm like, you want a bag of chips? Because I'm like, at this stage, now they're a little older. I'm like, I just need you to eat. Yeah, right. It's long days. Yeah, I just need yeah. you to eat. Yeah. I don't care if it's <laughs> organic all the time. I don't care if it's bad. I just need like literally Food calories <laughs> and things and knowing that you went to school and you ate. Yeah, yeah. But it's like he, noodles. He mm-hmm. has like a what? new sort of like bodega-y supermarket thing now. And they have like- Wait, what do you mean? It's called Cookbook. It's oh, a yeah. Larchmont. Wait, Cookbook oh, is wait. theirs? Yeah. How did I not did know that? that? Yeah. We went to the yeah. one in Echo Park. Yeah, they we have did. that. So like they have like pre-made foods. That makes so much sense. So like we give them sometimes <laughs> like the pre-made foods for, or we'll go to John and Vinny's and then like leftovers. Oh, I'm so hungry. and Me too, John There's and nothing Vinny. I love more. Yeah, yeah. We're just so hungry. So all we want to do is talk about food. Support for Broad Ideas comes from Honey Love. Ladies, imagine a bra that you actually want to wear. You probably can't think of one unless you already own Honey Love. Today's sponsor, Honey Love, has revolutionized the bra game. Say goodbye to underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, They're made with fabric that's so soft, it feels like a second skin. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. It's so next level comfortable, you'll forget you're wearing it. It's time to spring clean your bra drawer. Let me tell you, okay? After having kids, every lady might like a little lift, but you don't want to sacrifice comfort, which I never found in an underwire bra. Thanks to Honey Love, their soft, supportive bras have really been a game changer. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash ideas. Use your exclusive link to get 20% off. Honeylove.com slash ideas. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Support for Broad Ideas comes from Clarence. If you're like me and fully rocked out to sync, you're a millennial. And if you're a millennial, it's time to add Claren's multi-active cream to your daily routine. You've been adulting for a while, so the daily stress is swiping left, binging the fourth season of Gossip Girl until 2 a.m. instead of getting the recommended eight hours of sleep and just trying to keep your life together can cause stress aging. Yes, it's a thing. The good news, Europe's number one skincare line has a solution you can trust. Rooted in nature and innovated with science, Claren's has a long legacy of creating industry-first plant forward products. Clarins Multi-Active Cream has been clinically proven to target the first visible signs of aging by smoothing lines and wrinkles, refining pores, even toning, and texture, and strengthening the skin's moisture barrier. I have been using Multi-Active for over a week, and seriously, I can already see the difference. I have dry skin, so this is so moisturizing, nourishing. I feel like it is fully filling in the lines. Fine lines, bye-bye. 24-hour hydration. It's amazing. Go to clarence.com slash ideas and get multi-active day and night cream for 10% off, a free welcome gift, plus free shipping on your first order. That's C-L-A-R-I-N-S dot com slash ideas with promo code ideas. So, so he's not tired of cooking when he comes home? He's not really cooking. No. He's, I mean, he's, some days I mean, he is. He's not, he's not cooking, doing it seven like, days a yeah. week, but like maybe four nights a week he like makes dinner. And then three nights a week, he'll like organize whatever the food is for dinner. But like what I've learned from his is like, he's asking you what you want for dinner at like 11. In the morning. morning. Yeah. Like like one of the first times I talked to him on the phone, he's like, what are you thinking for dinner? (laughs) And so you realize mostly like it just takes planning. Right. Yeah. Or he'll be like, okay, I have salmon in the freezer. So when you come home from picking them up from school, put the salmon, start to run the cold water over it, get a cold, put it in the fridge. So like he's like he's, kind, he's, in con- he's always kind of planning. thinking of it, and like now their business isn't that he's like cooking on the line so much. Yeah. And so he's not he's not cooking all the time, but sometimes he's also like I'm sick of it. And like over COVID, he was like if I'm tired of my food. Like everyone's got to be tired of their own food at this point. I mean that happens. 
How did you guys meet? So my husband is business partners and in is in business partner with this guy, Vinny. And Vinny was dating this girl, Sarah. And Sarah and I had been friends for many years. Ah, uh, okay. So, so that's how you met. Set up. Group no, so activity. then we knew each other for <laughs> like, us. we knew each oh, Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. No, we knew each other for like seven years. Oh, you oh, did. We knew each other for a long time. I was like very professional of being single. I was very professional <laughs> of being single. And then, uh, but we were always sort of in each other's orbits and we would like, he would come to parties at my house or I'd see him around. But I just like wasn't really even sure of what I should be looking for. And I was just like dating everybody to like figure out what do I want. Yeah. And then you finally get to that stage where you're like, I'm actually ready for like a really nice guy that like values mm. me and appreciates <laughs> me, all those things. And I was at a birthday dinner and my friend, I don't know if you know Ashley Margola, she was yeah, like, of course. Just go out with John. Like John yeah. likes you. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can't believe that. And then sure <laughs> enough. What happened was I was gutting my, I, I was making a show living in Vancouver and I was I was gutting my house in LA because I, I was trying to get all the like ghosts of boyfriends pass out of the house. <laughs> so I like ripped the house up and I was like, Sarah, I don't have any place to sleep this weekend. Let me stay at your house. And she's like, well, John's staying here too. I was like, you have an extra room. And so that was like the first weekend in like seven years that we ever really spoke. Okay. What? Like we, ne- like, like, we like, really yes, talked. Like had a yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. and like yeah. talked. I was like, wait, this guy is like really nice. Oh, wow. He was like a really, really nice guy. And then I went away and so we had to like talk on the phone. Yeah. And then we came home on the weekends and we kind of saw each other. We did that for like six weeks. And you're like, man, you can, this thing of like being long distance short term was nice because then you could like have to speak and mm-hmm. talk and you couldn't be physical. You had to right. like. And I was like, wow, he's a really nice guy. Hmm. And he did something that was really nice for me when I was away that made me realize like, man, this guy really values me. Yeah. Like I was, gu- I, like, yeah, I was, I like, yeah, like, <laughs> I was gutting my house. And like I said, I was living in Vancouver and I was like trying to figure out what color to do the floors. It's a very high class problem. <laughs> but he like left work during the day to like go take pictures of the floor colors for me to mm. text it oh. to me. And that was like, this is a guy that like sees me as like worth the effort and like Aww. worth the time to leave work. This is a guy that like really appreciates me. And that's really what I was, you know, what you all, yeah. everybody wants to find. And so we, I came home from Vancouver and then we were just kind of, we've just that been was together. It. Yep. Wow. But how did you yeah. get to that point? Because I do think there's a turning point in women's lives where you date the guy, you date the guy, you date the guy, you're not getting what you want. You don't have that kind of attention that you want. But how did you get yourself to the point where you were actually ready to receive that? That's mm. so interesting. Well, I had had, I had been with somebody for a year before that at the Mm -hmm. beginning of this TV show. And then I spent the rest of the like year and a half run of the show by myself. And I was like, this is my fault that I'm like single and successful and alone. Mm -hmm. I had put like too many rules on the relationships. I was like making guys jump through hoops. And I was just like, I don't want this anymore. Like to be successful and alone is like not worth it. And I also just don't want to be alone. Like the thing I wanted more than my career, and you guys can see that I'm ambitious, is like I've always just wanted to be like married and have a family and have a partner. And like when I'm asleep at night, that's what I'm praying for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, That is like number one. But I was like, this is my fault. So by the time John came in, I was like, I am just going to say yes to everything. Mm. Mm. Right. And he was like, let's move. And I was like, okay, fine. Yes. Like everything that I would be like, no way. I was like, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes. And like, I really think the beginning of our relationship was like the hardest. Just like, how, who is this other person? How do you live together? How do you create a life together? Even when we first have our kids, how do we parent together? Mm. And it's only subsequently gotten easier. Right. Right. As we've like built together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like not that parenting is easy and like having two kids and two careers and families and all that. Like it's not easy, but like there's a lot of trust between us. There is a lot of, a lot of, um, just a lot of juggling, a lot of respect. And I just think a lot of partnership, like he does the food, but like I handle Everything. All the kids. Like, yeah. Not everything. Oh, because oh. he does all the house stuff. Okay. I don't do any of that kind of stuff either. And he handles a lot of that stuff. So, like, I handle, like, I go to kids. I'm at drop-off. I'm at pickup. I'm talking to teachers. I'm doing the classes. Like, what's going on? You know, like, yeah. I'm doing all that. And then he does all the other stuff. Partnership. 
It's a real yeah, partnership. It's a real partnership. It's a real partnership. Yeah. It's it's interesting too because I feel like one one thing I love that you said is the truth, which is that when you were going to sleep at night and praying, it was for that. Because I think so many times people pump this message of like, you have to be okay alone and you have to love yourself and you have to this and that. That's all great. And you should be okay alone and you should love yourself. But there's also a yearning, I think, for a lot of people that they shut off because they think that they should just be okay alone. When the truth of the matter is you're allowed to crave things Mm. and you're allowed to want things that you don't have. And I think that there's a narrative that that's not okay for mm-hmm. some reason. Totally. I mean, I enjoyed my singlehood yeah. and it was really hard, but like, I'm so grateful that I was like not partnered up until my early thirties mm, because yeah. like, I really got to know myself. Yeah. I like had, I went on vacations by myself. I did all that stuff, but you're right. Like that was the thing I was always looking for. And that was the thing that mattered to me. I like really wanted my own family. Yeah. Right. So now that I have my kids, I'm just like, how do I make it good enough that they'll want to come back? <laughs> I think you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're doing it. You're letting them have the bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> so many bags of chips. So but I try many. to stay away from the gummies. Yeah. Like, really? Why? It's not good for their teeth, the dentist. Oh, oh okay. So, yeah. Everything, but whatever. They have sour candy all the time. I do it all. Yeah. It's like lots of sugar. I'm like, you're not hungry? How about a bowl of ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Now you're hungry. You know, we talk about this like our kids get dessert every every day. Every, yeah. yeah. Every day. Yeah. Sometimes every meal. Yeah. Yeah. But just feed them. Yeah. I'm like, as long as you're eating the other stuff, you're going to be okay. Yeah. There's just so I'm, many. I'm yeah. bad. I'm like, those teeth are going to fall out. You're going to get new ones. We're going to lose this round. Yeah. In but how old's, your, how old's your child? I have two. I have yeah. um, an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 I mean, fun. two boys. You know? Yeah, two five. Oh, two boys. Two boys. Yeah. Yeah. I have a girl who's nine. So oh, amazing. She's, yeah. She's in third grade? Yeah. How fun. I know. It is fun. Although last night she was like, mom, oh, school tomorrow. And I'm like, honey, you used to always like be so happy to go to school. And she's yeah. like, third grade is really hard. Yeah. yeah, it is. I think it switches in third grade. I think yeah. it kind of gets a little more. Like, well, now they're like doing multiplication. Yeah, and you're division, like expecting and, to read chapter books. And yeah. reading to learn. Yeah. Not yeah. It's read a and different like, thing. Second grade yeah. is hard. We switched schools mid-semester. Oh. oh, good for you. And so we had a school that was like no homework, none of that stuff, right? And then we switched to a more you know, typical school. And my son said to me today, he's I'm so sad because oh, no. my little one has, he's different, right? Mm-hmm. And my second grader was like, mom, I'm really worried about Shepard. And I was like, why are you worried about him? He's like, this school's really hard. Oh. And I'm really afraid he's not going to be able to keep up. Oh, no. And I was like, baby, you don't need to worry about that. Like, we're watching. Mm-hmm. Like, we've got this. Like, we're going to put Shepard where Shepard's supposed to be. Oh, the little one. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. And it was just so sad that he was like, he takes worried. on so much. He though. takes on so much. Like, and as his like, guardian, he fe- right? Yeah. I was like, you have to trust us. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not going to have some Shepard somewhere he's not supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, but I'm telling you, second grade's really hard. <laughs> and I just don't think he's going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, the good news is he's not in second grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's just crazy to watch these, like, little brains processing mm-hmm. and, like— I know. Mm-hmm. I'm wanting to fix it. I know. It's so hard. It. I have a hard time with, like, the friendship dynamic. Mm-hmm. I don't know with your daughter if, like— When did it— Did it— Have you had to deal with yes. that? Okay. Because I need a little— I can read her right now. <laughs> Because I'm just, like, trying to figure out how to navigate this stuff. I mean, I probably made a a lot of mistakes. Yeah. I did make a lot of mistakes. When did you see it kind of start? Well, in kindergarten, there is this (laughs) thing in kindergarten where the parents could go to school on, like, per in, like, volunteer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just, like, sussing it out. Yeah. Like, oh, who do I like? Oh, who do I not like? Right. <laughs> right? Like, the ones, let me just have play dates with all these. Yeah. And there was just one that I was like, uh-uh. Right. I can just see that this is going to take us down a path. And, like, because I was a child actor, I, like, 
was barely hanging on at school. So I came up with other methods to like fly through. And I had a great experience in my education, but like I didn't learn too much. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. (laughs) But I have learned the school of hustle and I am like a professional at it. But like, I am just like very focused that I want my kids to like learn when they go to school. So I had like asked to separate my kid, Mm -hmm. my daughter from From, certain people. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, this is not, this is going to be distracting to the education. Got it. Got it. Smart. <laughs> right? In yeah. kindergarten, I saw it. Whoa. Because I, and I conferred with the teacher. I got confirmation. And then COVID hit. And then we came back and we basically came back in fourth grade. And I was like, what happened? You don't have that many, like, she's the nicest person. She has a million friends outside of school. But I was just right. like, oh, wow. A million. And anywhere she goes, she has friends. She's an incredible kid. But I was like, the relationships at school, she kind of missed the boat. And so last year, it was hard for me personally, because I was like, I'm sending you to a place that you love the education. You're like taking advantage of everything the school has to offer, but you're not really getting those relationships. So hard. That is such a big part of growing up, although she had those experiences and those relationships outside of school. Mm -hmm. So so, so So I literally, every single weekend, I was just having play dates. Yeah. One kid after the next, I was like, I will just foster these relationships. And we did, and it has worked. And I think in in it, she also learned, like, some of these people aren't that nice. And she herself has learned to be like, I don't want to be friends with X, Y, and Z. That's so good. But when I tell you I was at school, like, that hysterical mom, like, crying, being like, you guys— how did none of you teachers see this? Mm, don't make me, I'm going to start right. crying. I can't. Like, and I'm not like the stuff. quiet mom that's in the corner. I'm yeah. going from like one teacher to the next teacher yeah. to the next teacher being like, this isn't enough. Like right. just learning to read now is not enough if we're going to miss this big component at school. And also yeah. like she does have a lot of friends. And so that's that thing. And she's navigating it. But even now I'm always like, when I go to school, I'm like, oh my God, just hold it together. Sherry. Right. Like, just don't act like a nut job. Don't embarrass her. And then with my son, it's totally different. Interesting. Because of different genders too. And then you're yeah. like, yeah. if he's like, so-and-so is mean, I'm like, whatever. I know next day you're going to say that one's mean. And yeah. the next day you're going to like this kid. And he wasn't mean because he played basketball and he cheated. Like, I can't really wrap my head around it totally yet. Yeah. Maybe because it doesn't push my buttons in the same way. That's it. I don't know. With boys, I think it's a little bit, I don't know. My husband doesn't, he, my husband doesn't getting, he doesn't, he doesn't worry about any of it, well, which is so interesting. It is. I feel like that's a lot. I see it with a lot of dads. Like when things are going on, they're like, no, what do you mean? They're kids. Like or whatever. He's just like, our kids are going to be fine. Yeah. This yeah. is life. Yeah. They have to go through things. Yeah. Well, it's I true. I wonder like my son, we've moved every single year. He's <laughs> gone to a different school every year. And So he's missed out on some like really fundamental root building relationships through school. Mm -hmm. But he has them outside of school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, does it really matter? No, they say as long as they have one friendship, it doesn't matter. Like one real friendship. He has best friends. It does not matter if those relationships exist on campus or off campus. Right. You know how I feel? I'm like, as long as they have relationships and can build relationships. Yeah. To me, that's what matters. I don't know how to navigate, like, the mean girl stuff, you know? Like, I just, like you were saying, it's like, do you just remove them from that relationship or, like— I got all different people's advices. Yeah. Some people were like, they have to learn it themselves. Don't be too engaged. Right. Like, don't—and then my mom was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, this is the time in your life when you can, like, play in a hand in it. Because when they get into high school, we're not going to have that control. Right. It's so tricky. And so you're just like— It's like, yeah. And and so I listened to my mom. I listened to my mom. Because she was just like, no, if you see it now, why are you going to let it go on? Right. Right. Because they don't know how to—they don't know how to see it yet. They haven't learned it. And they they don't—they don't need to fight that battle. Right, but it's also—I think it's like giving them the tools now so they know how to navigate it later. Like, yeah. because you are still guiding them, you know, right. like you said, once they're in high school, they're like— They're not, but like sometimes they have to get their feelings hurt and right. they have to and feel, feel excluded. Like excluded. You're going to be disappointed. And to feel like that isn't friendship. That's not what it is. Right. Like, what feels—what is friendship, right? Yeah. Like, what is love? What do those things feel like? Yeah. Is that—that that happens because you have both. You have a boy and a yeah. girl. Yeah. That happens more with girls, right? Those conversations? Yeah. Yeah, but my son has those kind of conversations too. And what's interesting with the oldest is that my daughter is able to say to him like, oh, and that's not friendship. 
Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if the person's not being nice to you or saying they don't want to play with you because you're not giving them your snacks, like that's not a friend. Right. Right. It can be as basic as that. And then he kind of understands. Right. And so it, what is nice is her saying that to him and he like looks up to her in that way and that she's like the peer. But he does that. Sometimes he also says like, I don't know if I fit in or feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what mm-hmm. doesn't fit in at second grade? <laughs> like, what does that even look oh, like? Gosh. But like- it breaks your heart. But at yeah. the same time, all I think about is like, I drop them off in the morning and they're happy. And when I pick them up in the afternoon, they're happy. Right. But also it's like, if we were all really, at least from, I'll speak for myself, yeah. like I thought I fit in through school, but like when I look back on it, it's like, no, I started drinking at 11 and I started like, even like, yeah, you, like I thought I fit in, but like, I wasn't comfortable. Who knows what I would have felt like if I wasn't like, part of certain things. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the kids just have a more in tune sense now of their comfort because they have different language. They have different parents. They have different awarenesses where when I hear a kid say, I don't know if I fit in or I'm not comfortable, I'm like, good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good for you to be able to recognize that and be like, yeah, we all fucking feel like that sometimes. How are you supposed to fit in though? when it's like strangers from all different walks of life, all different life experiences and family dynamics. Yeah. And there's like 20 kids in the class and you're like, go find your people. You're like, what are you talking about? I can't even do that as a grown up. That's what I'm saying. So like, of course you're going to feel left out. Like it takes a long time in life and many experiences and a lot of different opportunities to find the people people that you're like, this is my person. Right. Yes. Right? And yes. I'm 45. My friend Wells that I'm friends, I met her at 21. But yeah. how many friends did I meet in my 20s that I'm still around with today? Very mm, few. Right. Exactly. Right. So how would eight? Sure. Maybe there's no one in this class you connect with, but like go have a good experience, get what you want. We have a great life. Right. So I feel like that too. I feel like we don't need to push. Yeah. The connections. The no. connections. Yeah. It's I like don't. if you put us in a room with 40 parents, and I don't know about you, we've talked about this with other people we're really close with. We're like, you go to a second grade. How parents many parents thing. do you want to hang out with That's when you I'm, leave? Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. So why would we expect our children to? That's what to? we say all the time. Just get a good education. Just get a good education. Just learn as much as you can. Throw the ball, chase it. That's it. (laughs) Just have a good experience during the day. But the friend dynamics is hard because I went to school and I was just all about the social. Mm -hmm. So I can't help but like want the gossip in her grade. And she's like, mom, why do you even care? I don't care. I'm like you though too. It was like all. It's all I care. Yeah. And my mom's like, you went to high school to like get your messages and like talk (laughs) to boys and that's it. You're like, yeah, isn't that what high school's for? Yeah. And I'm like, she's (laughs) definitely going to an all girls school. Like we definitely. Go to an all-girls school? No, I went to Calabasas High School. Oh, I went, you went to like to Cal- public okay. school. I ditched every day. I was like a professional cheater. I was like a hustler. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, was, <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah. yeah the best like, I had the best I, like, school loved experience. High school. I got to college. I was like, what? I've like done this. Yeah. Right. I was like, get me in the real world. Broad Ideas is supported by Blissey. Who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for better sleep? Let's talk about practicing self-care while you sleep. Set yourself up with better sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk pillowcases. Seriously, silk is what's best for your hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents breakage. That's because it keeps the moisture in your hair and keeps your skincare products and natural moisture on your skin, while cotton literally absorbs it off of your face. Say goodbye to wrinkles, dry, flaky, and red skin in the morning, and wake up with healthier and shinier hair. I love my Blissey pillowcase so much. Yes, I tend to have frizzy hair. And with the summer months approaching, the frizz can take over with the heat and humidity, depending where you are in the world. But Blissey pillowcases have tamed my hair while I sleep. It's amazing. Everybody loves them. They have a ton of different prints and colors, and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. They have over 1 million raving fans, and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash Rachel and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash Rachel and use code Rachel to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair will thank you. Wait, I feel like it was similar for me. Now yeah, you're right? putting it that way, you know? I mean, I did, you know, high school. But high school also had, like, a drama department cl- yeah, to it, which was, like, amazing. But it was a lot of partying and, like, boys and friends. And I met all my best friends mm-hmm. 
high school, you yeah. know? And so it's just so interesting though. But it's just so different. And then I'm like, oh my God, Briar, you cannot do what I did. That's how I feel. I'm like, just go to school and learn. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah like, get it. I want you to be, yeah, get a real education. Please. My <laughs> husband's the opposite though, because he had like a really wholesome, typical, <laughs> you know, just like a great experience growing up. Where yeah. He was more, it was more structured. Yeah. You know? And so he's like, I want him to live. And I'm like, I want him to learn, <laughs> you know, but yeah. like two different, it's, it's hard. It's like, there is that kind of, I like, want them to live hard, but after school and on the weekends yeah. and when they're in school, I want them to soak up that education and just feel like they can walk into any room as an adult and have a conversation that's like educated and informed about a variety of topics and feel confident in what they have to say. And then also at the same time, be like, let's go have a good time. Yeah. Right. Right. And like find passions. Like at this age, I'm like, we're all just learning to read, write. And like, but like, can we help them find things that they're passionate about that will like help them figure out later in life what to feel passionate about? Because that's like the key to the whole thing. Yeah. But I feel like you guys are already winning at that. I say this all the freaking time, more is caught than taught. They're watching you model it. Totally. I and totally. there is nothing that is going to be more impactful for them becoming that than you two doing that. Totally. You know? right. Thanks. That's nice. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think so. I mean, like my husband and I are like both, like, like I keep saying, like we're both really driven, but we are driven at the things that we're passionate about. Neither right. one of us are like educated in that formal way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I don't. But and my mom's always said like, there's so many forms of education, right? Like, if you're taking your kids, you're traveling, you're exposing them. You know, that is like the best education. It's like, okay, there's textbooks, and sure, there's things you need to know. Do we look back and are like, oh, I'm so happy, like algebra taught me, like whatever the fuck that you never use again. But like, if you're taking the kids to these experiences, I feel like it's so much more. I don't know what the word is, but it's just like well rounded yeah. exposing. What are you guys doing for spring break? <laughs> I'm going to Portland. Oh, you oh cool. Are. are you guys traveling? We are. Are you guys doing something? We're but not undecided at undecided. the moment. But we something. had a trip planned and then we scrapped it. Oh, what was it? We were gonna go take him to Mexico City, which yeah. we thought was sounded really yeah. cool, but then it just started to feel like, whoa, what is this? like what is this really? What are we really gonna do? And then last week we decided we are gonna we rented an RV. <gasps> yes. My dream. My dream too. My, My husband dream. has always said no. And for whatever reason, he just changed his mind and said wow. yes. And so now I'm like right, trying to book like our <laughs> yeah, our that is parks. The bomb. That it is, is gonna be it's gonna be incredible. How far are you going? Like we are, I think we're gonna go for like 14 days. I think we're gonna do, do like, the whole I think we're gonna go San Diego, Las Vegas, Grand Canyon, Zion, <gasps> Sedona. Like this but, is my dream. And me, me too. He's always said no, but then I was last night I'm like looking up RV parks. I'm like, yeah, whoa, guys, this is a little bit more intricate. It and is, like it is intricate. planning. It's he's a lot like, of it's planning. all on you. You have to do this. He's this like, is your shot it's list. A huge. This yeah. is my shot list. <laughs> it is. There's so much planning. So you have much planning. No, I mean the kids are more excited about this. Oh my god. John gosh. was like, I cannot believe they're telling everyone we're going in an RV. <laughs> it's, but it's so that is the fun. Best. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really fun. I'll report back. Yeah. Yeah, how Please it actually do. was. But yeah, we're going. We're really. That's always what I've said. Like, yeah. my honeymoon, I don't want to go anywhere fancy. I want to take an RV. Yeah. I mean, I've never been married. Yeah. <laughs> like, in my mind. I'm yeah. Like, I thought you were like, I've never been in one. No, but. yeah, I've never <laughs> been in one. But no, but also, you have two kids. You have two kids. So for me, like, I only have one. Yeah. So those trips, I'm like, oh, she needs like a do, another we little person. We started taking our family. vacations do it with, with other families. Right. Yeah. 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 Totally. Like our last cool. handful yeah. of vacations and families we don't even know that well. Yeah. Ooh, that's rough. Wait, what? We, <laughs> How yeah. do you do that? Wait, yeah. hold on. <laughs> because we met like some of our best friends at a resort. Okay. Like oh. a, in Mexico, we were on vacation. Yeah. We met this other family. And we're yeah. like, oh, the nicest people. We spent the whole vacation with us. Yeah. And we're really good friends with them afterwards. And then we went on another vacation. We like met another. John was like, let's just bring families with us. Like we're going to meet strangers. 
So one trip, we've taken two trips with families that we did not know well. And? Uh, one of them was last spring break and they're some of our best friends now. And the other one was like still really good. And yeah. it was like just fun. And like, we're still friends with them. Everything yeah. was great. Yeah. But you're like, it's just nice for the kids to have as long friends. As it, it's, the along, it's the it's only heaven. way it's a real like trip vacation is like if you have that dialed That's in. That's right. And then the tricky part is like when you're like, oh wait, their way they're operating as a family is way different. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we are like, let's play Uno at the table. If you need to get up and do a dance really yeah. quick, let's do a magic show. Like, yeah. it, I know the food's coming out, but let's just stop for a second because we got to play Taylor Swift. Like, yeah. whatever has to happen. <laughs> and if other people are a little bit more, but you that's just life. It is. It is. It is. And it it's is. interesting to observe. Yeah, but I think it's, I, I would highly recommend just like find anybody that's like, throw it out. I'm well, looking to go to Palm Springs. Yeah, 100%. Anyone want to go to Palm Springs? We do that. Like yeah. we'll go and join up with any friends and kids. Because yeah. that's, that's what yeah, fun, you know. Yeah, I just do it with know? my friends though. I mean, it's been I weird. mean, I've never, like I have my cousins and I've done it friends, like newer like, friends. Like we make friends through school. Like we've yeah. gone on trips and it's the best. Yeah, and now we're really good friends. That's right. It's a yeah. really good way to say like, are we friends? Right. And we went on spring break to Morocco with the family last year that we literally went to Morocco? Yeah, well, last year we took like three weeks. It was amazing. Amazing. That's incredible. How was it? Israel. It was great. Yeah. We went to Morocco, Israel, and Paris. Wow. It was really amazing. Because you're just like, if you're going to get over there. Yeah. If just you're like, with the family you did No, we know? did Morocco with them. Okay. And then we like, went to Israel, cool. met my family. My kids like saw all of our family over wow. there, which they'd never done before. My husband had never been. Wow. And it was really like just important and yeah. valuable. Yeah. And then my daughter wanted to go to Paris. Of course. On the way home. Of course. So we stayed for a few days. Yeah. And you're it's exactly what you're saying. You're like, just that time together. Yeah. Yeah. It was so valuable. Yeah. <sighs> now I'm like, oh, I'd love I know. To, I want to go to I Paris. Go to, I want to go anywhere. anywhere. I want to go anywhere. I, go anywhere. Yeah. I am always saying that. I'm like, I will go anywhere. anywhere. Mm-hmm. And the kids will go anywhere. Yeah. With their iPads on a plane. That's right. <laughs> no, it does make everything better. Like we're going, spring break, we're going to Mount Hood. I don't even like skiing. I'm I don't, scared. It's to like ski. I don't like being cold. I don't like, but <clears throat> the answer's yes. And it's with another family. So it's always better. That's right. I'm like, I'll go anywhere with them. But yeah. also, if you could give your kids the gift of skiing, then they'd be in college. My friend's like, you just want to get them like confident Comfortable, enough yeah. that if they're on a ski trip in college, that they can ski. Yeah. I know. My daughter's I, I, been skiing. Like, could she ski? We don't ski. I, I'm not great. Like, I always snowboarded as a kid, like, not well. Yeah. As a teenager. Yeah. Because it was cool, right? Yeah. And then she has started skiing and she's good. And I tried skiing for the first time last year. It's so much easier. Oh, it's been snowboarding. But I still don't love it because so I get easier. scared. That's yes, me too. I get so scared. I'm like screaming on the chair Because lift. I'm, I'm <laughs> getting off the chair lift, going yeah. down too fast. Like it's all, I'm just like constant pizza. Me too. Yeah. Pizza, french fry, pizza, french fry. No french fry. Just pizza. Oh, just pizza. <laughs> just I'm just pizza. <laughs> it's just scary. I don't know. But she loves it and I'm so happy and I encourage it. And her dad's great about taking her, so. No. <laughs> There's so many cold. things. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, scared. I'll stay back at the cabin and cook or eat and yeah. just not go. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> I know. There's so many things and they're so active. And I do, and I wonder, because like my daughter's so active. Like every day after school, there's something yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe they need a day where there's nothing. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm working on that. But she just wants to do everything. So it's like, how much do you support doing that stuff? Yeah. We do it during the week for sure. Like yeah. you're saying, every day after school, there's something. And then we try not to do anything on the weekend, but now, they both are found things that they really love to do. So on Sundays in the afternoon, they have like one thing. But on the weekends, we try to just let yeah. them chill. Right. Because it's, it's a it's lot. lot. I think they get overwhelmed. They get, a, yeah. And just like you're saying, everyone also needs a break from like, get out the door. We're going to be late. Get yeah. your stuff. We got to go. And so, yeah, on the weekends, I try not to. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, the but there's always either like a birthday, birthday or I was just going to say, I'm also like, do we really have to go to this birthday party? Yeah. There was an escape room birthday party this Oh, weekend. that's so funny. My son did it last weekend. Oh, really? Was it fun? Was it fun? Uh-huh. On so Robertson. Fun. Oh, on Robertson. We yeah. Were, this was like in Hollywood somewhere. Yeah. An adult has to go in, I guess, which we didn't realize. Yeah. And so myself and another mom went in. And it was so, I mean, I love escape Did you room. scary? Was it scary? Yeah. It was, no, it was like a kid-friendly one. Oh, okay. I'd be scared. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. Well, I always get, before I go in, yeah. I have that, moment of panic. Yeah. You're like locked in for an hour. And so like my mind instantly is like 
am I going to have a panic attack? Yeah. <laughs> what if I have to pee? What, you know what I mean? But I'm like, you're fine. And it's always fine. And it was yeah. fine. And but it's almost like you have to say, like, is this your real friend? Do you want to do that? Or we're going to do this? Right, right, right. Right. How important is— Yeah, how important no, is No, my daughter this does not want to miss it. doesn't matter if it's, like, a best friend or, she like, an acquaintance. Go. She cannot miss a birthday party. Wow, really? Well, she doesn't want to. What do you do for you outside of your kids? Oh, oh yeah. thanks for asking. You're welcome. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I like to exercise. Mm-hmm. All the What's your, what? What do you do? Well, I was, I did Tracy Anderson for like 10 years. Oh, wow. But then COVID hit and I just haven't been back. I like to hike. Like I said, I like to get out in nature. I like mm-hmm. to do a lot of Pilates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a Peloton. I like mm-hmm. the Peloton app a lot. Yeah, it's great. I use I the use Peloton yeah. app a lot. I am a class pass. Gal. I love class pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I could just find classes, but I like to exercise. Mm-hmm. I like to read. And what else do I do? I take hot baths. <laughs> I love to garden. Oh, I am like really big and you're into good at gardening. It? Yeah. Oh, I wish I, got, I was. Yeah. Again, John like helped sort of steer me, but I've really taken it over and we have a, we grow a lot of stuff at the house. Oh my gosh. What are you uh, <laughs> well, right now our kumquats are crazy. Oh, the love, whole weekend has been kumquats. about kumquats. The kids took them and sold them on Larch Month this weekend. No way. At farmer's Market, <laughs> I swear to God. We were there for like two and a half hours. That is so oh, cute. Selena Gomez cute. walked by. My dad was like, oh my God. <laughs> That's exciting. I mean, it was amazing. She was like 10 <laughs> years old, and I was like, it was a great. Uh, kumquats, tomatoes, lemons, limes, apples, blueberries. Wow. Pumpkins. I what? Mean, like we, cucumbers. We've grown everything. Eggplant. And then the great thing is that, like, John cooks it. So yeah. We actually, otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Like, right. I wouldn't know what to do with it. I don't like growing lettuce. I find it very unsatisfying because you grow <laughs> it, you cut it, it's dead. Yeah. Right? That's One it. One head of lettuce. It's finished the same thing with broccoli or cauliflower. I don't find that satisfying. <laughs> I grow flowers. But I spend a lot of time on my garden. You That's do. so therapeutic. Yeah. And I journal every day. I've been writing in a you journal do? since I was a kid. No way. Yeah. That's so good. But I do it all the time. Did you watch the Pamela Anderson documentary? I didn't. I didn't see it. But she, she writes in her journal a lot. She journaled. Her the, whole life. It was so cool to yeah. see because then she went back through all these. She's journaled the entire time. Oh, wow. So there was like reflection she could go back on. I was yeah. like, God, that's beautiful to be yeah. able to like capture her experience the whole time. Anyways, I want to read your journals. Yeah. yeah. It's so interesting. <laughs> I know. I was like, I feel like I like really found myself, especially in my 20s in my journals. And now mm-hmm. I just sort of journal just to like get my thoughts out or get yeah. everything out. Do you read it back or is it just Sometimes to dump? I like read throughout the full journal itself to be like, where did I start? Mm-hmm. Like I've been talking about wanting this thing for so long or look how I dropped that thread. Or like, man, I've been writing about wanting this. And like, look, now by the end of the journal, I have that. That's interesting. Oh, that's cool. How many do you have? I mean, like, so do you hundreds. keep them all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like some I have that have like, for my whole 20s, I used to get them like from T. Anthony and have like my name embossed on them. <laughs> like, but like, you know, my whole 20s, it was like every plane flight, every yeah. movie ticket, like everything was taped in there. That's so cool. Yeah, now my kids like draw in my journal. So I like kind of write around their drawings mm-hmm. and then you stick cards in the journals from people and then you just have them all in there. Is it ever hard to go back and look at some of the I mean, you're things? not going to read them because it's like, I'm excited I had this audition for the OC. Yeah. I didn't get oh the job. God. I'm just saying, like, no it's way. like, what yeah. do you write? You know what I mean? Like, Wait, so, did you? No, I never. I was already on Russell, but I was just like, oh, hey, I was, was like, say, what did yeah. I audition for? No, I just, but, but you do know my Josh Schwartz story? No. Wait, tell me. I probably oh, do. So Remind funny. me. Okay, so, so Josh Schwartz was Went to USC. Yeah. Right? So oh, yeah. Josh Schwartz and I went to USC, and the, my big sister in my sorority was his girlfriend at the time. No way. And that first, my second year there, uh, Josh was a third year, I made the pilot for Roswell, and Josh made another pilot, not the OC. The uh, the records one or whatever? It was the, like, a, um, like a boarding school or something. Okay, okay. And so we got together at his house— to watch our pilots. No. Oh, wow. And he found out, I found out that day that Roswell got picked up and his pilot didn't get picked up. Oh. But we sat next to each other. We watched each other's pilots. No way. Yeah. And now where our kids go to the same school. I know. I was going to say, but Stella's older. She's six. And then yeah. the other one is, they're both like one and year older yeah, than my kids. Yeah, and when he's younger. Yeah. But or it's older. very funny because our 
our lives have like constantly intertwined. Totally. But I always am like, Josh, you really scored since that one, uh, that one series. That one let down. You've done pretty well, <laughs> mister. Yeah. Oh my God, how yeah. funny is that? Yeah, really funny. I always talk, I talk about that because you just never know. Yeah, but you, you see him because of school. And yeah. he crushes it. Yeah. He crushes yeah. it. But yeah, that's what well. I do for myself. And I like just, I, I, I get into big phases of exercising. And I, uh, the other thing is I love the real real. Oh, oh my God! Okay. Yeah, I'm oh. just saying. Like, if you want to You're talk addicted. about like that, she thing knows that I, really gets I get me down. going. That is it. Cause I like I want to look go. great, but I want to deal, and it just like <laughs> makes me feel good. It really, it's it really, really does it's a really great. Great it really sight. does. I like don't do too much other beauty kind of things, but mm-hmm. like if I can just have some clothes that make me feel like together. <laughs> Are you good at making the decision? I have a group of my friends that are really good at style. Okay, so you throw it out to everything. Them. It's okay. like a group thread. That no, you just- I know different friends. One oh, of my best it. girlfriend in New York will shop together if I need to shop. We'll shop online. Like we'll do a Zoom and she'll shop with me. Or if I get <laughs> things, I'll send her photos. Yep. Or like don't put it with that. And then another friend of mine that I went to Morocco with that I didn't know who has incredible style. This summer, she said something to me really well. I was wearing like something with like a lot of flowery prints and very mm-hmm. girly. She's like, you don't dress as smart as you are. Ooh. Oh. And I was like, I love you. Thank How did you that feel? Tell- yeah. Great. Give me yeah. the note. Oh, wow. Give me the note. I think yeah. I would be like, hmm. No, I was like, give me that <laughs> note. She goes, that is not as, you are so much smarter than how this outfit is like selling you. I was like, I love you for saying that to me. Wow. And so I just like. Did that feel, it felt, that felt true. Great. Yeah, I was like, I yeah. get that. Yeah. Because I don't think being stylish is like inherent to me. Mm. So I like think about it. Like when I get dressed to go to work, I like really think about my outfits because I'm on set finally in my own clothes. Yeah. Being the boss. So like that's a whole thing. So I love a note. Yeah, I love a note. You that's, do have a director's mind. You're like, oh, yes, yeah. give it, to, give, give me the me feedback. No. Let me make Especially it better. Especially about my style. <laughs> wow. Or like things that I'm not like, or like my best girlfriend in the when I was shopping with, she came over Christmas. Over COVID, my husband started dyeing my hair. Like everybody else, <laughs> right? And so we never stopped for four years. It's amazing. Do, yeah, that for is four amazing. years he dyed my hair. And we were, and I didn't know that you were only supposed to dye the roots. The roots. And so for four years, he dyed my whole head once a month <laughs> and like literally fried my hair. And so my girlfriend came from New York and she was like, you, what are you doing? Your hair is terrible. Like, this is not going to, cheery, come on. Oh, no. And I was like, she's like, you're just prettier than this. This is like not the best version of you. And that's what sometimes you need your friends to be like, yeah. wake up. And I was like, thank you. And that's why I chopped. I went back and she was like, he can't dye your hair anymore. <laughs> like, I get that he's good at it and it's cute for you too, that he's like yeah. nurturing and like a cub and like, yeah, it's like t- a bit. taking care <laughs> of me and so sweet. But she's like, you need to go to a professional. What are you doing? <laughs> right. So do you? You go to a professional? No, I just did it for the first yeah, time. Yeah, that's great. Your root. That like was my number hair. one in my journal. The very first New Year's resolution was like, figure out your hair. Oh. <laughs> Get it together. They did it though. They, it looks great. Yeah, it looks did great. did it in January. So I felt very good. Like, there man, 2024 is off to the races. How do you feel? About, it's, I just had that length. It's Is your hair naturally straight like yeah. that? Yeah. Oh. But I blow dried it. I mean, I just like, I wash it. And then this today, I just learned to use a rolly brush for this <laughs> hair. <laughs> so I, I blow dried it. I was like, oh, this is a good one today. It's but so yeah, but I want to feel together. I get I, it. Now, you know, like we're in our 40s. You I You want know. to feel like a grown woman. So how do you feel? Because sometimes when I do feel we're like- really a, getting all over the place. I know. We are. We're really we like that's all. What we, that's not, we get it all. Because okay. sometimes, like, we'll dress, like, um, 14-year-olds sometimes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll be a little bit more womanly, and I'm like, I don't like the way this feels. Oh. This doesn't feel right to me. Oh. Like, I don't feel like I'm there yet. I only want to dress like the woman. Mm. And when I'm dressing like that other thing, I'm like, ah, God, sure, you gave up today. Oh. Oh, Wow. I have a really hard time. But that's just me. That's just me because I'm like, I don't. No, it's, yeah. That's just me. I feel like Victoria Beckham is also someone who probably. I watched that documentary. I didn't watch that. That series was incredible. Loved it. And they were so wonderful. And I had never given them the time. And I thought that documentary really opened my eyes to how much I love them. Oh, wow. You're making me want to up my game. If you want to see me when I go to bed. I wear matching sweatsuits every day. Like that is my uniform. I've heard Ava Mendez say that before. She never dresses in sweatpants in front of her dude or something. Didn't she say something like that? And I'm like, I just, I would, I don't know. 
I don't know how to. I don't know. How I to know. Dress. Like I try not to wear them. What? Except when I go to the beach or something. Then you're like, I'm at the beach. I'm wearing the sweats. But I try not to wear them. But then what are you at? The minute I, like, walk I wear this to I, drop off. But the minute I if walk I in the door, on, my clothes yeah. come off. My jeans come off and my cozies. Come sure, on. of course. When I come home, but like. Sometimes I'm trying to be like, maybe I'll put black leggings on in a cashmere sweater or something. Just, Sherry. but I don't. I look like a mess, you guys. I'm only, that's only my goal. That's <laughs> only my goal. But like, I, I lived all weekend in sweatpants. I feel like I look like a 90s, like hip hop um, I know. I was like, when I, when I was, my kids off at school. I try to look, I want, it makes me feel good about myself. If you're asking me, what do I do for me? Yeah, That's no, something I'm, that makes me feel this. good. It's very inspiring. It is. I'm thinking, uh, often. Yeah. <laughs> but I think often. you have really good style. I just want to say, Olivia, you do too, but I, I don't appreciate. see you in, on Instagram with your cute outfits <laughs> or like things. But I think you have really good style. I appreciate that. But yeah. if you saw me at school drop, a lot of the times I'll send like my friends or my school mom friend, and I'll be like, if I have to get out of my car. Yeah. I look like a legit, like, insane person. Yeah. Crocs, socks, wrong pajama pants, basically like a furry grandma robe. On yeah. T- like, it's the whole so combo. Cute. Yeah. But I found, I'm always like, I cannot get out of the car. And if my daughter needs help, yeah. when we pull into the parking lot, I'm like, I am sorry. I cannot get oh out of God, the car. Oh, my God, that's so funny. Yeah, no, it's a thing. Yeah. But that's how I feel sometimes, too. It's like, you know— that I always get out of the car because I'm just like, whatever. I have to get out of the I car, too. I just don't too. care. You both have to at drop-off? No, I just have. My, my inner soul just is like, I have to walk on campus and just like see that they're okay when they get in the class. I'm oh, like, you can walk go. them? Oh, we yeah. We walk in? Class. Yeah, you walk in. Hi, hi, Claire. How's Nats doing? She seems yeah. happy. How's Owen doing? You brought us Owen, take your water bottle. Yeah. Whatever it is. I don't know mm-hmm. that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. But I hear you. I feel the same way too. But I debate, should I just get rid of the sweats? But then I see like the monochrome. Okay, so interesting question. (laughs) I have really (laughs) decided also in the last like six months, I am just going to wear pajama outfits. Right. Yeah. Like a real proper. J. Crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. So I have like, that's what I wear to bed. I have them. Yeah. And I just oh, wear pajama them. outfits. Got pajama it. outfits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like matching woman, like you're sets. The, like matching Diane sets. Keaton. Are you wear. familiar with Eberge? No, I'm not. Okay, because they are the softest. Oh, cute. Most, but they're matching. Yeah, I have, so yeah. I have a few J. Crew outfits. Yeah. And those are what <laughs> I wear to bed. I wear, I try to wear those. Yeah. And sometimes I get cold, I'll throw like a sweatshirt over it. Yeah. <laughs> so I did this thing the other day and I had to wear, a, it was like an orange t shirt and a robe and like, Socks and it was supposed to be like a crazy lady, mm-hmm. right? And I showed my husband. He's like, "That looks like you, <laughs> just normal, just every Tuesday, normal. like that every day." So and I was like, and I thought maybe I should show up a little bit different. I don't know. I am not. I do not shy away from a granny nightgown either. And I'm just. I like nightgowns too. See, another friend of mine. I'm always like, when I go to the flea market, I'm like, should I just buy like white lacy things and just sleep in those all the time? <laughs> right. Or like instead of sweatpants, should I just be in these like Victorian, like old school dresses? <laughs> like I think about that. I wonder what Wells wears to sleep. I'll have to ask her. Right? Because I've been thinking she's, about this. This is like honestly what I think. No, about like that's I all I'm going to think this about so now. much. Yeah, like what do you wear to bed? I know someone who only wears like lingerie and Ooh. always has. I won't say okay. who it is, all but right. I respect that. They only wear lingerie and I was like, I like lingerie, but there's like a time and a but place. Like I'm not going to sleep in like, it. They're probably used to seeing her like that or something. Do you know what I mean? Like I have very feminine right. friends that probably dress like that too. And they're probably just used to seeing them in that. I right. do need to go home and just like clean it all out. I always feel like I want to just clean it all out. Yeah. And refresh it all the time. But that's also like I have so much stuff that I've kept for the past like 30 plus years. I know. I've been trying to just get rid of a lot of it. Yeah. That whole thing of like if it doesn't make it. me feel good when I look at it, just like – yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. I'm good at that. I can do that. Yeah. I think that that is really good for your state of mind. And mm-hmm. that's the same thing with gardening. Just to tie it all back together. Yes. I like to go into the garden and clip out and get rid of all the dead stuff and all mm-hmm. the dead energy. Mm-hmm. And like make room for the fresh thing. And I feel like the garden's in the front of the house. And so like it's like the energy bringing into the house. So if I can just like clip it all, it's going to bring new stuff around. I love that. What do you wear? To wear, when I garden. Yes. Really good questions. Well, you garden, <laughs> you get bit by bugs a lot. Right. This, really? Right? So, like, you, and you want to be covered because if not, you're going to have, like, things biting you. So, uh-huh. I do wear, like, and things you want to get trashed. Old sneakers or, like, rain boots, jeans, sweatshirts. 
I just don't want to get ha- sometimes where I happen, I don't mind getting sun. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm cool with the sun. A little vitamin D action. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I like getting sun. <laughs> and um, so I just, and my gloves. Yeah. yeah. I'm loving all of it. Yeah. Th- these are important. Yeah. Things. Yeah. But that's really what important. I spent a lot of time thinking about. The mm. real real has really taken over once I've discovered it in the last year or so. Oh, I, little, oh, yeah. I always oh, need yeah. Rachel. I do I'm it like, for her. I'm like, it's I just hard to make <laughs> decisions for me because I'm like, I like that and I like that. Yeah. But I'll just let them sit there. I just buy because once you buy, it's like one shipping cost. Yeah. And so I just buy as much as I can. And then return. And then I take want. it back in and I return it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just wait till my yeah. cart is like really full. And then I find that one thing that I'm like, this is yeah. the thing I This need. is action. Yeah, right. When I can't let go by me. Oh. There's some things I missed out on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I know in that cart, you only have like 20 minutes. And then well, that's you only right have like 20 minutes. It gives me anxiety. But, but yeah. like, you, most likely it'll still be there and you can put it back in. Yeah, but it is does get, add that you extra just have to element know you have of to like go quick. You gotta move quick if you want something. But yeah, I like my closet a lot more now. Do you know mm-hmm. I check it all the time because I once left my favorite coat at like an ex boyfriend's oh. that I never got back. <gasps> so I go on there often to see. Did he sell it? Yeah. Could you imagine if it resells? That's a funny movie idea. That's cute. I wonder <laughs> yeah. how that plays out, but that's a little yeah. cute idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cute. real life, guys. We yeah. have covered so much real life. <laughs> I know. I know. And I know. it's great. And so what's going on now work-wise? Well, I just wrapped on Tuesday. I was directing the first two episodes of Imprisoned, the second season oh, yeah. of Carrie Washington. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so I am editing. So I was sitting in my so car. Fun. Oh, that's what you were doing. <laughs> I was getting, writing my notes down for the second one. So I edit this week. And then I'm just trying to call a feature into my life. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I have a few that are what, out there. What kind? And I... I I, well, I like happy, sad. I like things with emotion. I like working with kids. Mm. And I have a few that are out there and I'm just trying to be like, let's just make it happen. I love let's that. Let's just make it happen. Let's just manifest make it. it. Happen. Yeah. I'm manifesting yep. it like crazy. And let's make it be the one that's yeah. like the key to all the other doors being open so there's yeah. more of them. Yeah. Let it be really easy. I'm like, ta- I'm like, me yeah, well, you are manifesting it all the time. Yes. When I have something going, I'm like, just talk about it right now. Let's just talk. Yeah, about just talk about it. Us witnessing it too brings more power yeah, to it. Yeah, so I'm just trying to call that forward. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's here. That's it. That's it. So I'm just trying to do that and like work with great people and yeah. And you're gonna RV, RV, spring break. I mean, so parenting, full time parenting, and we're about to hit summer, guys. I know. It's already. I can't. It goes so fast. I'm like, how are you? I, it's already here. It's already here. So just I don't camps. Fuck you just signed up for camps like two months ago. I just got I told did. that. I yeah. didn't know that information. Yeah, well, I was a lot. It's in full swing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Summer I can't. Camps. No, my, my mind. So that's yeah. what's Oh, my going goodness. On. What are you guys doing? Summer camps? Summer camps. I don't know. Yeah. I'm always so, because I it's we're unpredictable and like we travel and we don't. There's like one trip we always do with my family. That's the only thing we have set. And it's like right when school gets out. So nice. Yeah. So like my cousins and their kids. So it's like it's a big that's so trip. nice. And that it's kicks so off nice. the summer. It does. And my daughter looks forward to it every year. There you go. So that's all I have planned thus far. I'm already signed up for like four camps. You already did it? Yes. Yes. Oof. I signed up in October. I had to because the other moms were like, hey, I know. Our kids and it, it's and not, like, and then it's not available. Camp, so you're like, oh, they do? To, Where? Uh, I want to go like to East Coast? Camp. My daughter's doing two camps, and one of them's in the East Coast. Wow. So. There you go, that summer. And now it's already Christmas. And now we're at Christmas. <laughs> now, I quit. I quit. Now, now basically trying to figure out what am I buying for Christmas presents. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Planning Christmas break. No, I'm just kidding. Could you imagine if you were like, I'm already planning Christmas? Oh, I know people that are. Right are booked. Yeah. Me too. For sure. Stresses I just thank out. God for other people that give me the cues. They're like, Stresses now it's time out, to do this. I'm yeah, like, okay. I wouldn't have a clue either. <laughs> no. Yeah. We're all just trying we're just to do trying. our best. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming Thanks. and talking thank you with so us. Having me. I really I'm excited it. for you. Yeah. Thanks. So fucking cool. Thanks. Maybe yeah. I could shadow you someday. Yeah. Anytime you want. Oh my God, that would be amazing. We could just do a make a shot list tutorial at home. Yeah, Let's just that do too. It now. We could do all a of it. shadowing, all of it. It's all possible. I love it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yay. Amazing. <laughs> all right, back to pager codes, guys. 
We started there. Let's end there. Let's end there. This so is you it. never had a pager? Do you even know what a pager is? Yes, I know what a pager <laughs> is. What is Did it? you ever have one? It's like a beeper. Th- yeah, it's like, a beeper. Yeah, you page someone and then they go find a phone and they call you. Or, or you have codes. Mm-hmm. Like 143. So you can page means, someone a message? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what 143 stands for? Uh, you guys said it stands for I love you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what 823 is? Eight, well, so 143 is first word's one letter, second word's four. Correct. Three. So what's, what's 823? I would tell eight you. 823. Is it similar structure? Is it an eight letter word? You go ahead and try to figure it out, Rob. Yes. 823? Eight, eight, mm hmm. He's trying, he's thinking of all <laughs> if he could think of. This might help. Together we stand. So I went on my, <laughs> I went on my first date with Jeff, yeah. right? And oh, I know the story. Because he was a doctor, he had a pager. And I was like, oh my God, pagers. And we were you like. You must be so rich. No. That's what he's you're thinking? He's a family medicine doctor. Family medicine doctors aren't rich. Mm. Any Huel Hauser, he had a pager. So I was like, oh. We were talking pager codes and all of that stuff. And then the next day, he texted me 823. No, he texted me 823. Mm-hmm. And that made me know that our coffee date wasn't a friendship date. So what does 823 mean? What? You know what it means. Oh, I know what it means. Will I you th- text someone 823 and see if they know what it means? Yeah, good idea. Um, 823, this is not a date. It made me go, oh. And okay. the first word's eight letters. Yeah. Am I really texting someone that to see if they yeah. get it? Text yeah. a specific person that. Okay. You don't and just text what, a random yeah. number that. Can I have a hint? What's the first letter start with of the first word? <sighs> a T. T. Together. What do you want someone to do when you're not with them? Thinking yes. of you. There yes. you go. Yes. They're going to be like, I just sent an 823. They're going to be like, what? Well, or if how they old understand they what it means, also, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, if, if they know what it means, thinking of you is a nice text. I loved it when I got it. I was like, oh, oh. I, do you, I'm a, can I text Natalie yeah, 823? Like and Natalie. she will yeah. be yeah. like, what I'm going to text are you Jeff 823 about? right now. Aww. She's not, she doesn't even, she doesn't have a pager ever. So this is going Well, sometimes people does she know 143? No. Yes, she does. Huh. You know what else we used eight, to two, do? 823. Mm-hmm. No dashes or anything? Nothing, 823. We used to do like Yeah, just the numbers 823. Like her code was I 19. I bet Casper knows what it is. No, he does. No way. Let's call text, every mon- Casper, millennial eight. in the book. Jeff maybe would know what it is. He's older. <laughs> yeah. We should just text as many yeah. people as possible. Natalie just sent me a question mark back. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would respond like immediately? Leah? George. Did George have a pager? I he know. No, he's young. He, but he seems like he would know. The Leah codes. knows, obviously. And you all had your personal code. Yeah. So if you t- six, sent six, a six. number and then after the number was like another, like your code, then you would know it was that person trying to reach you. Oh, so it didn't even say what number it was coming from. You were just getting a random 823? Yeah. Wait, no, it no. would say the number. But like, let's say Rachel was with her boyfriend and I was trying to get a hold of Rachel. I would text 411-419, which would mean I want the information on Rachel. Mm. Right? Or 143419. It'd like be if like, I didn't have my pager on me, but my no. boyfriend had his. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Casper also gave me a bunch of question marks back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who else can we who get? Who else? Who else? Did you get Jake a response? Johnson. No. Um, yeah, send it to that group chain. Yeah. 823. I'm going to text George. Who else? Um, that's it. That's it. We're, this has gone on way too long. Okay. Sorry. No, I'm having such a good time. I was really feeling like, we should have some fun today. Yeah. Jeff oh, said, is this a code? Oh, see, so he's, no one he's, knows. he's of age. Sort of. It is a code. We could do trivia. Trivia? Yeah. Rama I'm going to give it to you with no trivia. I like cocaine straight from Bolivia. Sorry. It's not true. I don't. 
In what country? Oh, stupid. God. I fail. Oh. What? Oh. In what country did the first Starbucks open outside of North America? China. Mm-mm. Japan. Mm-hmm. Where were the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and Bill of Rights stored during World War II? Oh, my God. Oh my gosh, the Smithsonian? I knew Rob would be so <laughs> I want to die. This is like the laundry, this is the laundry for, me. for Olivia. <laughs> yeah. I play trivia. Which company slogan night. is in you're in good hands? Where are you getting this trivia? I don't know, random folders. No. Canada. With what country, right? You said? Johnson and Johnson. All state. That's oh, it. I thought I thought you said what country's slogan is you're in good <laughs> who hands. The, so was who like, was the first televised president? Hoover. No, Roosevelt. Pocahontas was baptized and given what English name? Jane Smith. I never knew. No. Rebecca. Have you ever heard that before? She wants to die. Yeah. <laughs> this makes me want to die. This is not a good, what other, pick I'm a different, sorry. Suck it yeah. from somewhere else though, because that's not good trivia. They do friends trivia. What was Golden the original girls. purpose of the tiny pocket in jeans? For your lighter. No. The Damn. extra buttons. No. Matches. Change. Think about how old Change. jeans are. Change. No. To store pocket watches. Mm. Olivia is... Mm, mm, mm. I don't like this game. Want to know something interesting about me? I would love to. <laughs> I can be like unsure in the past. Like I even remember being in my 20s and being like this. Like unsure how I'm feeling about like the current person I'm dating, whatever, whatever. I could go to their house and feel so comfortable Mm -hmm. and like, oh, like I'm in this. You know what I mean? Like just like in their space, weirdly. Mm -hmm. But then out of their space, I'm like, I don't don't like you. Oh. Does it mean you're only dating them for their house? (laughs) (laughs) She's like, I like their blanket. Okay, that's great and everything, but can we go to your house? (laughs) Wait, so so you can, you get to their house and you feel like, okay, I'm in this, but then when you go out into the world, you question it or when they come to your house? Yeah, like Stockholm Syndrome. I'm talking about like early 20s, like specifically thinking of a situation. Everywhere else, it was like a hard no. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I kind of know what you mean. Yeah. So what is that? Codependency? <laughs> I don't think so. You know what I think it is? I think it's judgment. Like when mm-hmm. you're just the two of you in their space, you're free of judgment. But then you go outside of the world, you start questioning them. Right. And how they show are... up in the rest of the world because you're questioning yes. how other people see them. Yeah. That's Isn't exactly that? what it is. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Isn't that interesting? Like even but those their, are also the people that like, you know. But even like their voice or like. Oh, everything. everything. I'm thinking of someone specific. I know who you're thinking <laughs> of. In my early 20s. No, late teens even. I know who you're thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, but I always just remember that. And then there's people I'm like, yes, I want you in my house. I want you in my space. I want you in my world. Are you more comfortable in the beginning going to their space or having them in your space? Mm. Good question, right? Great question because that's <laughs> always the awkward like. The wake up in the beginning of like everything, you know. Like I, I feel like it's probably changed for you too. What do you mean? Being a single mom. Oh it's, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah, for you. I'm just speaking generally, like knowing myself, and I'm not putting it into like specifics because yes, I'm a single. Like obviously, people aren't sleeping <laughs> at my house, and I'm not like sleeping out um, often. But but it happens. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's so awkward because it's just, it's the morning breath. It's the like having to like go to the bathroom Mm -hmm. or morning coffee. And you're like stuck at someone's house for like in the beginning of things can be tricky. So you always prefer your place. No, I'm just talking about mornings in general in the beginning. I think no matter where you are. Did you prefer? Right. Um, Would you you, prefer yours or theirs? Because then you're trapped with them at your place and then they don't leave. Sometimes we don't. Mm-hmm. I've had that happen before where like. Pretty recent, right? No. Not that recent. Where I had a panic attack, but I think the coffee was too strong. Mm. Oh, I remember that. And I was like, oh my God, like I need. I have had something happen once where I was joking. Like it was like the beginning of dating someone and they had something like really important to go to. Like on their way to. 
And they were like, oh, I can't figure out what this place is. And as a joke, I text my address. Like, oh, it's here. Like being flirty and like cute. Yeah, that was cute. And then they came to my house instead of going to the event. Yeah, Acc- but they- Accidentally? They, no, they knew they were doing that. It was a real power move. It was but cute. Let me, but let me tell you, when that happened- and I realized they were coming to my house instead of going. I, I panicked. Oh, you didn't get ready. <laughs> no, I panicked. You didn't think they were going to actually do no, that. No, I was just being like cute and flirty. And like they were coming to my house. And I, I was like, like it. no, I got so nervous because like, oh my God, no. Like I don't want them to come here. And then like they're getting dropped off. Like they don't have their car, which means do they think they're sleeping over? And like the whole spiral starts. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, she spirals. Yeah. Anyway. They did wind up sleeping over. And then in the morning, I had a panic attack. Because they were still here. (laughs) They were still here. And it was a lot of caffeine. And they would not stop talking. (laughs) 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 And they had an anxiety attack. And so, like, I was like, I just feel really sick. So I had to, like, go in my bed and, like, curl up and act like I was. Well, I did feel nauseous from the coffee. But I was having a panic attack. So I was like, I'm really sick. But then I came over the next day and you made me that same coffee and I had a panic attack. Yeah. And I was I like, have the tendency. She's heavy handed. I have the tendency of making like rocket fuel coffee. I have had a few people tell me. I am unwell. <laughs> yeah. Mate, have you ever thought that maybe that's what fuels your anxiety? Yes, absolutely. And just, just keep rocking with yeah, it. All right. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. had someone recently show me a proper dosage like I don't like the proper dosage water. though. It's too weak. Like the way it's supposed it can to be, be made weak, is weak, and that's the problem. But it can't be as strong as I do because that is so intense. But someone did it, and they didn't even measure it, and they were just like, doo, doo, doo. and I was like, oh, that's so much better. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I can't do could, it on my own. Messed me up a few times. Yeah. I'm sorry. People have told me. Yeah. I get this report. This is is serious. Maybe try uh, reducing. <laughs> That your, your caffeine after and- that incident, that one I'm talking about where I had a full blown panic attack and someone was here and like wouldn't stop talking, I decided to go half calf for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get rid of the person, she's just like, Let me just take the caffeine down a little bit. Did that help? Did that help them stop talking as much? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I've told you what my mom does. What it's my favorite. Her husband talks a lot, and so she's made a deal with him. You're allowed to talk to me in the morning as much as you want, only while you give me a foot rub. But when the foot rub's over, you have to stop talking. That's brilliant. It's pretty good. It's a good it's move. It's really good. It's a move. Yeah. It's a power move. It's a power move. So you still haven't answered my question. What was it? Would you rather be at their oh. house or your house? In the beginning, in the mornings? Yeah. Just in general, at night, in the mornings, in the beginning, like— I think mine— that's not totally true. I don't know. It's it depends on who it is. What if you're stuck at their place and you have you have, you hold it and you go home. You have things to do in the morning after your coffee. You hold it and you go home, or you go somewhere else to the gas station. <laughs> do you think they care that much? No, they don't care. At they all. don't care at all. Yeah. So then, why do you? Why do you? Me? Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't have anything to do with this. What do you mean? In the beginnings of things? I think I would. You would. Please. I know an illusion. you. Yeah, you would you think, leave. You and think like, there's an illusion that they think that you don't, don't poop? shit? No, of course no, everybody but poops. I just don't like it. I would be like. I like well, keeping that stuff for me personally. Like, sure, I'm sure. never going to like. You keep it? <laughs> I understand if you're in a hotel room and like yeah, it's very go, close quarters near someone's lobby. house and they have more than one bathroom like you can easily go to like the bathroom like figure out how to do it and discreetly where, yeah yeah if you have to I'm sure yes if you have to if you're gonna like spend the whole day with them but yeah if but if you're leaving anyways, leaving anyways like just within and you're just reason. cutting it short because you don't want to deal with yeah this I'm not really a person that has, like, the emergency where they can't, like, wait. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, I can wait till I— You're always a little bit constipated. (laughs) That's what you're saying. (laughs) Oh, my God. I just don't like it. Mm Mm-mm. Any of it. Well, I know, but if if you're acknowledging that they don't care— They don't care. 
then what is it for you that makes you care, care so much? They what have if they like, did? You, but, but what do you, would you do if they were like? Here, well, yeah, if, you'd you'd be like, yeah. fuck this person, I'm gonna be yeah, with him. Right? Do you think they'll Most be dudes, less? I don't think care about that stuff. And do you think they'll be less attractive to you if you do it there? And they no. s- like you're concerned about smell. You're concerned no. about them hearing it. What are your concerns? I don't know. Just, it's just knowing like that it's happening is like, like yeah, it's private. Like I'm never someone that would like toot in front of someone. Never. Like a well, again, that's romantic. Partner. That's different, though. Is it a little it's bit? Like in front like, of? Yeah, you're going to the bathroom. Why are you doing the bathrooms between you but and then God? Then you think about it. It's so weird because you can have like blaring lights and be so vulnerable. Like yeah, so with your partner. Yeah. But like that stuff, you're like no. Yeah, because that's not sexy. Mm-mm. Like but it's the actually doors, like not sexy. But the Mm-mm. doors closed. The doors locked. I don't like it when they do it either. Mm-mm. I'm like I'm. I'm not saying that like but I don't you should care if stomp I hear, around. If you like walk out of the room and you hear them like let one out, you know, and you hear it, but like they're doing the courtesy of like waiting until you're not in there, but you still hear it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I'm, I'm also not saying like stomp around and announce that you're going to take a dump and like talking <laughs> what if you about did? it. What if you stomped well, around? Well, I know there's people like that that are like very open and talking about right. it and it's couples cute. that are like that. I'm mm-hmm. not suggesting that, but if you're going to another room and like maybe don't be in there for a half hour, but never. Half hour. Why not? I'm, I'm saying like there, there are versions of it that maybe would be weird, you but there's also do, versions of it that it would be. What's totally your normal. experience with it as a guy? Like on the other end of it, because girls are so kind of weird and crazy private about it, and I don't. Feel not like, all girls, but really, yeah. I mean, no, I know obviously not all girls, what, but what like, they do in the bathroom is between was up. It's, you, so them. you're saying care. when you first start dating someone and they disappear for a while and you know they're in there going to the bathroom, you're not like, oh, she's in there taking a fucking shit. I'm not like, this person's disgusting. They've got a <laughs> bowel movement. And but what do you think? They ate food yesterday and I understand that that's, that's how a body works. And I know. It is so simple. Listen. That is how a body everyone works. Everyone out there who does care about this, you have to do the instant flush. As soon as it comes out, you well, flush. I, I get being embarrassed or yeah. or trying to be aware that like you don't want it to smell and you don't want yeah, it to be like sound yeah you can carry that poopoo around sure you. the little they have travel size that you see but if it's so a guy weird. but if it's, it's like a guy's no. bathroom it's probably already like dirty and smelly like you're not making yeah. it any worse you guys guys are disgusting <laughs> i live with so many men yeah like and boys and i cannot tell you how gross the toilet is. Oh. It's really gross. Now. I don't like it when the toilet seat is left up. I don't either. How do you feel about a guy sitting to pee so that they don't get pee all over the place? Are you saying you make Jeff sit to pee no, so he doesn't pee all over that. the place? But, but, <laughs> but maybe. But what if I could? Like, why am I teaching my children to stand up and pee all over the toilet seat and the floor and well, the this and the that. Be, Why can't they just they sit, sit down and pee? Well, you you're, like, you're already you just af- hold your penis down. But you're already afraid to sit on a toilet in public bathrooms. You're hovering. Yeah, I don't. So sit. if you well, could stand and never have to have your butt touch a toilet and pee, you wouldn't. But what about in your own home? Sure. Like, they do sit. they have to stand and pee all over the walls? Like, is that a thing? No, I mean, I have to. I don't pee all over my walls. Because I heard in certain circles that it's more respectful for a man to sit on the toilet and pee so you're not peeing all over the place than it is to stand and pee. In certain circles? What does that mean? There's certain circles where a bunch of men live together. And when these men live together, they are like, you sit on the fucking toilet. You don't stand up and piss. Those kind of circles. Sure. I, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Would you think it's weird if you walked in and your dude was sitting down to pee? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a dude do that before. You have? Yeah. Why? He probably had to poop after. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when it's an appropriate time to sit and pee or stand and pee? Like, what if you're standing and peeing and then you're like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Then you turn around and sit down. Why not just 
start in one place. You know, I mean, you know, when you go to the bathroom, you know if you're going one or two. You do? Yeah. Do you not? <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting down and you're like, I'm. Also, like, your body can only, like, do one or the other. My body, at least, can only do one or the other. It can't go at the same time? Not, like, the exact same time. Huh. I don't know. You've never had to, like, fart while you're peeing? (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Next, hey, hey. Next time you have to fart, go sit down and start to pee. And see if you can fart while I don't still. fart. All right. <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> Do you fart? What are you guys? You don't. <laughs> you don't. We They're didn't do a question toots. yet. You do not. All right. Here we go. Advice on waiting until marriage. Don't do it. This is a 19 year old male and a female. Hey guys, my boyfriend is Catholic and I'm not. We're in love, everything is great, but he was raised religious and thinks that sex should totally wait until marriage. And while I'm not opposed to the idea, I have only heard complaints and regrets from people, especially women that have waited until marriage, saying that you need to check if you and your partner are sexually compatible. Have you and your partner had any discussions like that? Did you wait until marriage? And do you have any regrets or advice? I think it would be important to me if I was going to marry someone to experience intimacy with that person prior. I, I agree. You do? 100%. Oh, so you would never marry someone unless you boned them? Yes, correct. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even talking about, I'm just saying like any form of intimacy. Yes. Yes. Sure. As long as you're exploring together things, so not everything is a surprise. Like once you're married, now you're getting to know that person like physically because sometimes that's not compatible. Right. Like in intimacy with a relationship, just penetration. <laughs> Rachel said that. It's his favorite word. Favorite word. Drink penetration every is- time you hear Rob say, say penetration. Penetration is <laughs> only a portion of <laughs> your sexual relationship with someone. Like- I agree. It's all, it's a segment of it. I mean, it's a yeah. maybe a high percentage of it, but not the only and not the only important piece either. Yeah, I think that your compatibility is a lot wider than just that. Yeah, and that you probably would know. Well, like I some think I would like marry some someone. people wouldn't be able to orgasm from penetration, so they're doing it. Other ways. Yeah, but I think that that's most of their something, life. if you love someone and you're compatible in all these ways, like, I think that that's part of the journey is like, if you guys have to figure that out together, you have to figure it out together. You're going to have to figure out a lot together yep. if you marry someone. So, And there's maybe something fun about saving that piece for marriage. I wouldn't be against it. Like, I personally already had a child with my husband before we got married, but... I wouldn't, like, if I met the love of my life and he was like, I'm really, like, this is something that really matters yeah, I'd to me. I'd respect that. I would respect it. I but, wouldn't be like, you must fuck me. But but Sorry. also you wouldn't, like, we can't do anything. Like, we can only kiss. Well, that's chemistry and you can know things just by kissing someone. So you'd marry someone if you had Sight hadn't. unseen? Yeah, just kissing. I'd have and to, and yes. the whole emotional say, relationship. Yes. This bitch would go on Love is Blind. <laughs> <laughs> you would. She would be like, I, I yes. Have you ever, here's a question. Have you ever thought you really liked someone and then hooked up with them and was like, oh, that's not there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fair you can not, Yeah, not have chemistry with someone. For sure. That's happened and to that me squashes multiple times. It, yeah. I don't know if that's ever happened. That's to me. so interesting. Like I, I'm just trying to think back of, like, like I, you can get into it no matter what. I don't know if I've ever like hooked up with someone that there <laughs> that was like. Sounded rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I'm beyond. Well, honest. there hasn't been times where you're just like doing it to do it, but you're not like into it. Because that's kind of what you're saying, essentially, right? No, she's saying the opposite. She's saying she's always into it. That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't know if I've ever thought I liked someone. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, and I, then that was I the like this factor. person and then hooked up with them and been like, ooh, never mind. That's not there. I don't think that's ever happened. It must be nice. 
I mean, I don't understand what I don't. I guess what, yeah. the difference for me is like the people I'm thinking about that I hooked up. I didn't actually like like. <laughs> that, maybe that's the difference. Yeah. What I'm saying is like I've never thought like I like this person. Yeah. And well, then hook up with them and be like, but, oh no, I don't. So you yeah. do you not think you can be emotionally compatible with someone and not sexually compatible with someone? Hmm. No, I think. I mean, I think I've. I, you can definitely be sexually compatible with someone you are not emotionally compatible so it's, with. It's happened the opposite with you that you've. Y- yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That that has happened where yeah. it's like, oh, I don't like you. But you were good at this. <laughs> but that is there is compatibility there. Mm-hmm. But I've never had it where I thought I the liked opposite. someone and then was right. like. Mm. I don't know. I feel like if you think you like someone, there's usually some sort of draw there, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you guys are saying you have had that. Well, I just, no, think I just they're... said that it's usually people that I didn't really like, but I just wound up hooking up with were the ones where I was like unsure. Yeah, that's different. So, well, the, so yeah, if you're well, going you to get to the point where you marry someone, you usually think you're going to, you like them or love them, right? Yeah. Well, I guess, so the, the, for you... <laughs> Have you liked, yeah, have you liked someone? You didn't really answer the question then if you are saying you didn't like those people. Is there a situation where you like someone a lot, you thought there was something there, and then you had, you got intimate with them and then it killed it? I think I like them because the chemistry is there and that translates into, yeah. Same Z's where that's, Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But you're saying that has happened to you where you thought you liked someone and then you hook up and you're like, oh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. It just was. It just wasn't. You just weren't feeling. I'm trying to go in my mind. Just think of have you had bad sex before with someone that you liked? Someone not good at sex. Hold on. I mean, sure, but like, <laughs> did I like them? <laughs> yeah, you were. Able, you yeah. got over their performance because you liked them enough. I don't think I've ever had. Bad sex. I've written some funny it's, stories over sexual experiences. So I don't know what's wrong with me. I think you could have been entering picky sex in a yeah. way like that you needed, but you've also just fooled around and had one night stands and I've only had one one night stand in my life. And it was very intentional. You know what I mean? Anytime but- I've attempted a one night stand. Yeah. Like they still text me to this day. That's what I'm saying. I only had one proper one where the guy was from Italy. Never saw him again. Oh. Part of that is maybe yeah. expectations, though. Like you, you knew going into that 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 was. I can remember one experience. Like you're at. Like I could think. Like oh, that wasn't. That wasn't good. Mm. That was not pleasant. Do so. But was it a one off, or did you try it again? Being like, we'll see. I think I tried it again, but then we didn't wind up actually like. Having sex, but maybe hooking up again. Okay. If I, I'm, in my in memory is a little iffy, but I'm pretty sure. Right. Someone like you. I know. To have a bad memory, not to. But I was like younger, you know, it was like. I'm just so curious. I have so many questions. Like um, what makes it bad? Yeah. You know? Yeah. What makes it bad? But like also, I think to your point, like I don't think that I typically was drawn to do that with people that there wasn't some sort of chemistry with, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't just like, hey, you. Take a walk on the wild side. Yeah. Do, 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 do. do, All right. right. You covered a lot. So much. Do you just fart? No, it's my chair. Thanks, guys. This was really this is a good educational. This is a good one. Love Wait, you. Thanks for Love you. In there. Bye. Bye.